study and the recommendations that eventually should emerge would help us really to have a clear steer on how uh, policy development within this education sector would be more predictable, should be more efficient, and should also be building on the past good practices. Um, I, I think that that to me, uh, a lot of it is more of the empirical gap that we need to uh, look at in terms of why should we be constantly getting to the review cycle, the review mode, and yet implementation of certain key recommendations have not been really uh, done. So that is part of what this study is supposed to uh, unearth and to help us uh, give recommendations. Prof, over to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So can you, can you then submit uh, that work, resubmit that work again, and if you have not done through order so that it gets to me. Okay. But also you can just, uh, Boaz, why don't you send that to my email, not the register email, but my personal email, uh, ayirolaban okay. at gmail. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Next, uh, this month, just uh, five minutes summarize for us. Well, if, uh, if, um, if, if I would be allowed to share my document, it would just take three minutes to do yeah, I don't know who will allow you to share because I, uh, my the host is. Can you try sharing? Are you prohibited? Yes, I'm prohibited, and we now have a host. Uh, let me let me allow you to share. Let me allow you to share. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, I cannot this share. Who? This is who? Desmond. Desmond, Desmond. Tula. Yes, Desmond. Okay. Then there's. Yeah. Okay, you can share now. All right, let me try. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, uh, All right. I hope you can now see my, my paper. It's just, this is basically yeah. my introduction and background to study. I'll, I'll, I'll just skim through what I think is important. Now, my, my, my key problem is if all of you have been reading the newspapers over the last one year or so, there's a big, there's an erosion in moral values world over, you know. And, and I, get a, I, got, I get statistics from America where 54% of adult respondents feel that, uh, you know, the state of uh, morals is poor, 33% um, is fair. And that, that just gives us from Brennan, he just tells that it gives us a feel of the universe. We were told not to restrict our studies to our backgrounds, but it's a universal problem. In India, it is even rising, and, and there is statistics to do with us by Roma and Sharma. Now, talking about corruption, corruption is, you know, by Transparency International, you know, out of 80, 180 countries which have been, uh, which have been, uh, which have been surveyed, over two-thirds score below 50, which shows that there's a big problem about, uh, in, of corruption in, this, in, in the world over. And of course, me and you, we don't want to talk about corruption in Kenya because it's something we know. It's, it's, it's an endemic problem, you know. Now, talking about moral yeah. standards, again, just to, 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 to tell you the extent of this problem, you know, prison population doubled between 1920 and 21. And whereas there are 86,000 prisoners, there are only 26,000 prisoners. Prison, I mean, the capacity of prisons is 26,000. Again, which is alarming, you know, that that means crime is, is just being perpetuated day and night. Going to other, this is drugs and uh, drugs and um, uh, drugs and alcohol abuse, you know. It is even worse when you see one in every six Kenyan, according to statistics, that's 4.7 million between the age of 15 and 65, is projected to abuse at least one drug or substance. I mean, we should be worried. And then one of every three males between 15 and 65 and one of 16 females that's, are using one drug or substance. I think that is something which we should be worried about. And then we go into a bit of background, you know, uh, our, our youth, I mean, the, the, uh, the, the main, looking at some of the main issues behind the youth, why are, why are youth, um, why are youth overusing the drugs? 
and you know, and learning institutions are becoming a, a, a haven for drugs. And this, again, this is the Kenya of the future, which we should worry about. And, and nobody, government is not talking about it, and we're not looking for solutions. Now, turning to corruption, this one, this one is the most interesting, which is an endemic problem, is that it's grown from 48.8% 40 in 2018 to 71% in 2021. That's data by, by, by the Anti-Corruption Commission, which is, a, which is something which we really need to, 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 to look at. And we talk about it every day, where corruption is, pro, 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 uh, is promoting underdevelopment. We are seeing service delivery, short implementation of government and private sector projects, basically because yeah. of corruption. Now, going on, an interesting statistic which makes me brings the problem nearer home is that Kenya is ranked 126th out of 180 countries by Transparency International in terms of corruption. And we need to just take cognizance. It is a problem. I'm just building up the problem which you're experiencing and how we are going to, to how what I'm suggesting we need to do, how some of the solutions. Let's look at the youth. Strikes in boarding schools, we were all there. It's been written. And, and the most interesting statistics is that second half of 20, 2022, we saw an average three strikes per week. And this is empirical evidence written to people who have, you know, gone out and researched. And, and we need to be really, really scared about that. Now, moving closer to home, and, and Opalo writes that, you know, our schools are not taking a 360 degree look at the students. We are, we are not looking at the spirit, social, spiritual, and psychological needs. And when you look at all the, the interventions, yeah, the role of religious institutions in modeling good behavior, we are, we are ignoring the religious institution. We are ignoring the church. And even the president, when he was deputy president, proposed solutions calling for mentoring, student mentoring and prayers in school. Now, looking at um, all these statistics, it points at as an urgent need. It points, this is the background, it, at an urgent need for, for some policy to curb uh, this social degradation. Now, the church before, from the early days, was peer people. The church was like a yardstick, you know, for social uh, for social wellness, you know, and and you know, it health and education were all provided by the church, and particularly education with a Christian touch. It was there was a lot of morality. There was Christian morality, or uh, and, and church Christian schools played a large role. In the moral formation, and 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 the yeah. schools yeah. laid a very good um, uh, Christian foundation from the elementary level. Now, there's a school of thought which is saying that that look, we we think that let's let's be let's be preventive, and prevention is starting to to lay a Christian foundation, a church foundation, going back as one of the solution, going back to the church to play its traditional role. Of social wellness, you know, and you know we're talking about the Christian way of life guided by morality, the principles of right and wrong that guide behavior. Christian morality is a framework for making ethical decisions, as we know from a Christian perspective. However, we see church dysfunctionality, and 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 which first of all we see the church has has experienced a decline in ability to influence society. Which is now is, is the church is actually yeah. relinquishing its responsibility to secular world, you know, and these dysfunctionalities are 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 you know manifested in leadership in for dysfunctionalities, financial dysfunctions, functional dysfunction, spiritual and moral dysfunction, structural dysfunctions, and social and and cultural dysfunctions. So from 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 where we from where I sit, I would think that one, the government measures are all failing over time. There have been policies, you know, and that I'll, I'll, I'll show that in my statement of a problem. There's been a raft of policies. There's been a raft of measures taken. But are they working? I don't know. And I, 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 and I would like to find out if we took um, strategic treating the church, if we treated the church dysfunctions, and we know that 
majority of citizens of Kenya profess Christianity in quote, which are which are, I've got statistics on. Yeah. Would this coupled with, with the measures the government have taken to prevent uh to, 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 to prevent this social degradation, would it be additional and would it help the measures to work? Would it augment government efforts in uh, in the fight against social degradation? Now, then I have my references where I used to, to which I used, Prof, just for to show my backing. Okay. Then I would like to then um, just go back to to uh, the yeah. one quick one, Prof. My 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 statement of problem, mm -hmm. which I'm just dry, drafting now. Um, you will see it in a minute. Are we together on the statement of problem? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 showing. Yeah, so go, go right. through I, it I, very quick. I think, yeah. Prof, I won't go through this, but this is an element of threading. You know, some of the background mm. I give, but then more alarming in my statement of problems that the government interventions and through policies, and I name all the acts, don't seem to be working. In fact, the problem is getting mm. worse, particularly in, in some areas of, of where drug and, and alcohol abuse is getting worse. And of, of, mm. of me, of main concern is the church, there's minimal involvement in the church because the church has become irrelevant, you know. And, and we mm. need to find out why the church is irrelevant, why the church has left to the secular world, what we can do to treat the dysfunction, the dis dysfunctionalities within the church so that the church can be more relevant and the church can go back to leadership mm -hmm. in providing moral, I mean, moral leadership to society in Kenya in particular. Uh, Malimu, that's mm -hmm. just a rough draft, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm I'm already working. That is my uh, my uh, my uh, my uh, my yeah. my uh, I, problem, I, problem I, statement. Where I'm saying a lot of people have written yeah. on sustainability, but it's not about sustainability. Mm -hmm. I, I want to investigate this dysfunctionality. What is it contributing to the societal mm. degradation? And or is does it have nothing okay. to bear on societal degradation? Thank you, Malimu. Okay. Thank you very much. I think we are taking shape. I'm I, I'm smiling. We are taking shape. Can I have this work? I would like this work. All of you, when you have done something, however crude, just send it to me. But put your name and admission so that we know it is yours. Uh, Amata, Paul, you want to have a comment very quickly because you want to wrap up with the key. Walim, Walimu, this is already in your mailbox. It's sent. Thank for this month. I'm just looking at that uh, where the first line uh, where we have the in-text. Chigo, uh, Zi, Munene, and Edakuo. Previous research on sustainability of church and uh, organizations. I'm looking at that in-text and uh, I was wondering if you are supposed to use the hotel. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's a point, yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, and and uh, I'm hoping that uh, we'll also tie up, by the time I finish this uh, proposal, we'll tie up the APA nomenclature. There's also something very important which will come at the end, and that is the abstract. I will teach the abstract last when your proposals are ready. How we'll construct the abstract in front of the PC. Uh, Judy, you have something to add? Yes, good evening, Prof. Judy? Yes, good evening. Yeah. Can somebody mute? There's too much, there's too much noise. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm on the road. Hmm. So this morning you can uh, stop hearing. Hmm. Yeah. You uh you had you did not get a chance to go over. I had given in two research topics. Hmm. And we were to go, you didn't get a chance to go over mine last week. Okay. okay. So make reference to Dr. Mwaka. Because oh, okay. they submit they're the ones who submit. Yeah, we'll we'll do that. Okay, Gaki, very quickly, five minutes. Just give us okay, thank your you. thinking right now. Yeah. Okay, you thank have you, something Prof, to share? 
Yes, I do. But I'm trying to share, but I can't. The host has disabled my screen. Dr. Martin, can, Dr. Martin, you can just enable everyone so that you don't have to keep enabling one one. Okay, go ahead. The key. Okay. All right. Just. Dr. Martin, have you enabled? Yes, she's enabled now. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that. So I just go directly to being able to outline my research area and the research scope. Sorry, I'm not sure they've been able to see the document. No. No, uh, yeah, it's just going to be now. Yeah. That's what I'm sharing. It's there right okay. now, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So my topic is basically uh, even as guided by Prof on inclusive learning and attendant pedagogies and investigative study on the invisible disorders. So I'll quickly take you through the aspect of the background of the study, whereby mainly what I was looking at is the students who have special needs. But in this particular scope, I am focusing on what I would call the invisible disorders. Invisible disorders because you cannot directly see them by just looking at a student. Instead, you tend to um, need to know the issue once it's evaluated in this sense that theirs is mainly what you'd call a phenotypical heterogeneous issue whereby it's both a blend of academic and behavioral difficulties and therefore has to be defined or there has to be an assessment to be able to look at that now great effort has been made uh, at all levels for school going children to be able to meet the millennium development goals and education for all unfortunately this has not been seen especially in our in the less developed countries whereby first of all the issue on impairment is mainly looked depending on the child and not as a collective responsibility where you tend to emphasize with this particular uh, child in order as a teacher to even support them. The other thing also, it's about the negative attitude on the traditional thinking, which is more on the social barriers in the sense that those that are disabled are also seen as dishonorable people within the society that we tend to, to, to come up with. That it's um, a shame to the family that these particular children tend to exhibit this. Now, further into it is that being able to look at even the, the school setup or even the teachers that have this particular uh, scope in it, you'll find that most of them are not even aware whether it exists things to do with dyslexia, ADHD, they are not actually aware that it is there. Why? As I said, you cannot tell it out by just looking at them. Now, the other thing to be able to look at it is that even the students themselves are first in denial because, I mean, disability generally is shuddered at. So when someone is looking at them, they also want to actually be, uh, be treated normally. And where someone notices the gap in terms of their writing, they do not tend to acknowledge that, which we call more of a denial even from their end. And therefore also making these particular uh, students aware that it's actually something that they can be helped with in the sense that they, uh, we can have things to do with learning support offered to them, whereby if there's the difficulty in coming up with the writing, for example, the word bed, they would tend to interchange, uh, interchange the words uh, B and D to read dead. So if a scribe is there to actually write for them, therefore it becomes even easier to handle this particular student. 
Now, at times, the issue is not necessarily even with the student or even the awareness of the teacher. Some schools or some areas, even as I'll give data to read and all that, you tend to find that the class sizes are quite huge. So even the teacher tries to offer attention to this particular student, but the time is not there. They also have the struggle to keep up with the pace of the curriculum and even tend to remember that within a class setup, we have different category of learners. The fast learners are also there. So what? how do we cater for them? Now, sadly, it's whereby we have these others that exhibit the ADHD, whereby what happens to them is that they're always considered as a nuisance in class. So the teacher will keep trying to give them extra work, extra work, and of course for them it's the attention they need, or, and, and even as I said, it's not mainly out of um, parental love they are seeking, no, but because there are underlying issues which we call the invisible disorders at hand. Now, all this particular bit is um, generally to look into this scope and to see the awareness in this. My purpose in the study is mainly to examine the obstacles impending the successful uh, execution of the inclusion uh, process. Uh, Prof, if I may, I, tell, I would want to mainly focus with the international school, not to be biased in any but because I have taught in the international curriculum for the past six years. And in these six years, I have seen the dynamics that we tend to have in the scope, whereby uh, one school, you could actually tell that this child has the, um, the dyslexia or ADHD, but the support is not being given. Others, another school I taught, there was support until COVID happened. So when COVID happened, there was uh, the, 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 the bit that happened is that the learning support teachers were seen as a liability by the school administration. And there, therefore, once we resumed to normalcy, the learning support has never been brought back. And we still have these learners and they actually need the, uh, the support that is required for them to be able to actualize their goal. And you see, the, 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 the sad bit is that the parents pay an arm and a leg for, for actually their school fees, but these particular things are not offered to them. And sadly, actually, is that there are no special schools for them. You know, there are schools that you can actually take a child who, who exhibits autism, uh, Down syndrome, and all that. It's actually uh, an area that you can outrightly take them. But these others will always be with, the, with us and something that you can actually not tell out. Even as I conclude, the reason as why probably I did not include uh, our Kenyan system. My mother has been a, a, a teacher for the last 31 years and an administrator for about 20 years. And when I tried to get information from her about it, she was actually also not familiar that things to do with dyslexia uh, happen. And my concern was, is it that it doesn't mainly, does it not exhibit uh, from uh, our African context? Because most of the students I have taught come from the Indian or the Arab communities where intermarriages within families are actually encouraged. So is it just not mainly about uh, an invisible disorder that is just exhibiting itself because it's heterogenic, but was, is it also a genetic thing that is actually an issue here? Thank you, Prof. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Boaz, uh, Desmond, and Gaki, uh, I love your courage. Uh, you'll be surprised how much impetus this will give you. But I know many students in this class now are saying, my God, I had better get moving because uh, we are all moving at the same pace. So I want, I'm very excited. So Gaki, let me have that, Boaz and Desmond and others. Please email me your, your works. Uh, I'll have time to look at it and I'll send it back to you. And we are moving. So the class of tomorrow, I want to look at assumptions and I want to look at conceptual and theoretical framework. Uh, and then uh, we will start chapter two, uh, literature review, and then methodology chapter three, as you write. You know, you've got to write. We are writing. 
So when we finish chapter one, you should be working on your literature review. I hope you're getting assistance from the library for articles. I keep telling Carol, Mark, and uh, and uh, uh, Martin, they need, I think we better segregate these students so that I can now begin to give the students. For me, everybody is my student, but the ones now you segregate, people can now start looking for articles for these people to read because I'm going to literature review and it won't, they won't construct the literature review if they have not read the uh, the literature, the, the, the relevant the literature. I want all of you to anticipate a seminar. Anticipate a seminar. Uh, and this will be blended. But I would like us to meet on a Saturday in Valley Road or wherever, and we carry our brown bags. So you carry your nduma, your cassava, your tea, your chapati, your sausages, your uh, what, uh, whatever, uh, from Java or from Bama. Bama has very nice hot matumbo and ugali. You can pack it. And we just sit, we just sit from morning and we listen to each other. I hope that time we'll have almost uh, you know draft zero proposals and we just listen to you you we tell you make make 15 slides and come here and talk to us about the background about the problem you know the topic the background the problem the objectives research questions tell us your limitations and limitation the rationale give us the assumptions operationalize your terms and give us a rough conceptual framework. That's what I would like to see. Uh, so about 15 slides. And uh, if I know some of my students are overseas, they're online. It will be blended. So you'll also be tuned in. You can do, you do your presentation online. But I would love us to come and just uh, uh, and I'll, uh, assemble many of the supervisors and our faculty. And we just help you. By the time we leave that room, we know we can start at 7, usually 6.30 in the morning. And uh, we finish at 7.30 in the evening. And everybody will be ready to defend. Uh, I have enjoyed the class. I hope you have also enjoyed the class. Uh, these are the things that make a difference when you, you punish yourself to understand what is required. So I'd like to... I traveled safely. I thank God for Johnny Masses and... Uh, We'll be with you tomorrow. Uh, Saturday class will be moved to Sunday uh, with your permission because I'll be burying uh, the late Chakaba on Saturday and funerals in our places take very long. So let's meet tomorrow uh, and uh, I, I propose we meet at five so that we, we, we give more people a chance. Now, please forward your name if you have something, if you are ready. Uh, to the directorate, the mother directorate, so that um, we know who is who is presenting their work tomorrow. But I would love to have some of those that are ready. Just look through them before uh, we we go through the presentations. But we are moving. We are moving very fast, by the way, because out of fifty five, I know I have about ten of you already with the, uh, something that look that looks like chapter one. So we are moving. Uh, with all those many comments, uh, Eugene, you have something to say? I wanted to close. Yes, Prof. Thank you. You had also asked me to share uh, just before the class began. So I hope you can give me an opportunity in one of the coming classes. Thank you. No, tomorrow you'll be the first. Thank you, sir. So uh, Martin and uh, Marka, Eugene will be the first to present uh, his concept note. That's the spirit. Uh, good night and God bless. Bye-bye. Just there are those who, when Magdalene was receiving the refined topics, they didn't send and you need to put them in their different categories. I want to request all of them to mm. send their refined topics so that we can categorize them in, in the best way possible. So if you, I, I, you were able to see there were only 25 who send refined topics. Yeah, so if, you, if your topic was reviewed by Pro, please share. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. That was a real stretch, especially having trouble. Yes. Yeah, go ahead.
my request is is it possible that she gets back once we email so that we are sure she received our refined topic because i emailed two times she, but she will send, so usually sure. she sends she sends the, the updates there i'll share the list she has sent so you just have to see if your name is not there you send All right. that's what she usually does she usually sends the names of those whom she has received if she has not received your name is not usually there so uh, that's the only thing. If she, you know, re replying to all the students can be tedious, but at least she posts the name so that she doesn't have to respond to everybody. Then she needs to then to resend to send the updated list because I haven't seen it since I emailed her. Well, we will share Cindy. You know, it can never that be easy. It's, you know, it's, you know, she's doing so many things. So just just be patient. We'll we'll share tonight or tomorrow. You so that you send no if you don't send. No and, problem. Uh, Thank you. So sorry, Doctor. Yeah, just to ask, uh, Doctor Martin, you can end the live YouTube so that it doesn't have to record these discussions. Yeah. Okay. You can just okay. stop it there. Yeah. I'm asking this, Doctor Yua, yeah, to prof. Eh? Yeah. 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 Somebody like me, my topic, I, I had to get a new one. It was not even a refined one. So what? How do you go about it? Because uh, prof has not like really looked at it and maybe guided over the same before I take the next step. So when can that be done? Yeah, because we didn't encourage people to really make up their mind. That 